So this is version 4.78 of GPVDM and the major improvement in this model is the ability to do ray tracing. So um, until now the model has really been concerned mainly with solar cells and for solar cells to figure out the photon density inside the device you effectively solve the forward and backwards uh, wave equations within the device and assume you've got sort of a, a constant source of illumination from outside the device and then you can calculate quite quickly the um, distribution of photons within the device. However, um, LED structures and no LED structures are slightly different in that you've effectively got source of spontaneous emission within the active layer and um, these sort of photons are being generated within the device and what you're really interested in is the f what the probability is of those photons leaving the device to the top surface and sort of being useful to the outside world. And the approach that's usually used in um, LEDs no LEDs is ray tracing and what this effectively is doing is um, following the path of individual photons out of the device. So it's a bit, it's effectively the application of a Snell's law, like you, you sort of did at school with a, a light box and a, and a piece of glass and looked at the angle and the reflection, refraction, and things like that. And it's effectively applying those rules to the various layers within the device. Um, so what you do with a ray tracing model is you generate a photon at some place in the device and you follow it to an interface between, say, two layers. And you then um, calculate probability of being transmitted or reflected. And then follow those various transmission reflected rays again and again and again until they escape the device. And you figure out sort of how many photons actually got outside the device for every photon generated. So um, I've implemented this in the model. So to have a go at using this, what you do is you make a new device. So OLED structure. And let's make a simulation called simulation click save and it will generate an OLED structure from uh, materials database so here we go um, then very simply if you just uh, click run just like you did before <coughs> it will calculate assuming the photons are generated at some place in the middle of the active layer it will follow the path of these photons um, until they escape the device. So if we sort of um, zoom in here we can see quite a lot of light bouncing around in this layer here which would suggest there's quite a lot of light trapping going on in this layer which again suggests it's not very good for or it's not really helping the extraction efficiency from this structure. And here we can see the photons that have been emitted from the device. Um, it's a 2D model so it's effectively solving a slice down the centre of the device um, and we can look around it and uh, if you want to look at the efficiency of the photons that are extracted from the device, what you do is you you go to the uh, plotting tool and uh, you look at uh, some info.imp. And if you look at this very bottom line here, so LED extraction efficiency, this is the, the, the calculated extraction efficiency of the device, which is about 20%, which is um, what you'd expect it to be. And again, you can just look at the LI curve if you, or the vo voltage light curve if you uh, so wish. Where is it? LV. So this is the. Um, light voltage curve generated by the LED. So that's really it. Um, I've just put this feature into the model so um, it probably needs a bit more tweaking and if people can suggest or if, if there's any particular thing that people would like incorporated um, into the model so maybe the ability to do multiple multiple wavelengths at the same time or, or, or what have you I'll very happily um, look at those requests and maybe improve the model in, uh, as people find useful. So that's it, and uh, thank you for listening, and uh, yes.